Today is April Fool's Day on Around Kansas, but Deb is reminded of the history behind the Spanish flu and why we should not let history repeat itself. Next in our wildlife segment, Kansas Department of Wildlife Parks and Tourism shares the story of their Kansas Walleye Initiative. On the front porch is a fun story of Chico City. Ron Wilson shares another poem and we end with a look at some amazing pictures of the thunderstorms Mother Nature stirs up in Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Deb Goodrich. Welcome to Around Kansas. Coming to you from my home office this morning, and you don't know what a struggle it was to find a spot that uh, was passably clean and not too terribly cluttered. As always, I'm rearranging. I'm trying to fit more books into the office. And the reason I'm not downstairs in my living room is because it's full of kids, just like many of your homes have been full of kids for the last few weeks. And while I dearly love having them here, finding a quiet moment is a bit of a challenge. So this is April Fool's Day. Happy April Fool's. Happy birthday to my very dear friend, Dina Anson, and I can't think of a more appropriate day for her to have been when Dina's mama looked at the calendar and saw her daughter had been born on April Fool's Day. She knew what she'd be in for for the rest of her life, and she was. Dina has made our lives interesting for a long, long time, and we love her and send her all the best today. Well, it has been a challenging time for for many of us, and uh, so many of our events that we work so hard to plan have been canceled, or things that we look forward to attending have been canceled. But as a historian, I'm reminded of all the research I've done on the Spanish flu, and of course that epidemic, uh, Ground Zero, was here in Kansas in 1918 at Camp Funston, just next to Fort Riley. Millions of people worldwide lost their lives. There was virtually no one that was unaffected by that pandemic. So, folks, we're all in this together. Let's do our best to get through it together. Be kind and take care of one another, because that's what it's all about. In the end, just be kind. Just be good to one another. I have so many things going on, despite the fact that uh, we can't get out and about like we had uh, planned to, and I know that all you do too. I um, have been working on, of course, Santa Fe Trail plans for 2021, and let's keep our fingers crossed that 2021 is a better year. But, you know, I shared this thing on Facebook the other day. It was um, about John Newton and how when Cambridge University shut down because of the bubonic plague, he was forced to stay at home. And this is when he perfected his ideas on gravity and all these other incredible things. So, you know, if we can get a quiet moment to think, maybe there will be some great works of art, some incredible accomplishments. Maybe we'll get the housework done that we've been putting off. You know, and social media gets so much criticism, but let's face it, we'd be lost without it. You know, it's a, such a great way to keep up with one another 
And our Facebook page for Around Kansas is growing all the time. And, you know, we appreciate you all so much and we want to stay in touch. So if we have to do that through social media right now, well, thank goodness we have it. Aren't we blessed? And when we look around at everything that's going on, our blessings still far outweigh our challenges. And let us not forget that. I sure don't. And I count each and every one of you as one of my blessings. And I hope that I bring blessings to you every Wednesday morning when you allow me to come into your living room. I so appreciate it, as does everyone else involved with putting together Around Kansas and our other Ag AM show. In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. My name is Karen Cope, and I have multiple sclerosis. When you have MS, on the outside you look great. But you know what's really going on in the inside is chronic body pain, chronic fatigue. And there's lots of days that I'd wake up and say, well, please God, help me get through this day. You know, after stem cells, Chloe, my youngest daughter, she was asked by my father-in-law, how's your mom doing? And Chloe said, uh, Grandpa, I've never had a mom like this before because she was eight when, when I was diagnosed and she really had no other memory of me but being sick. It's really the simple things that we do as a family, like play cards and, and to be able to win at cards, you know, they all laugh because I used to repeat myself and say, what hand are we on? You know, what's, where are we at? And it's just been really a, a true blessing from God and we're, we're really thankful. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. While folks have been practicing social distancing, which I have to tell you is just such a foreign concept to me, it's been very hard to grasp. In fact, my daughter once told me, long before this happened, that I was a connector. She just read some fancy book, The Tipping Point, I think. And she said, Mother, you are a connector. You allow fashion trends and plagues to occur. So that's why I'm staying at home, because I want to keep each and every one of you safe. Well, some of my buddies who have always been loners, who've always practiced social distancing, find that fishing is the perfect sport. And Kansas has a lot of great fishing. And we owe the next video to the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism talking about walleye. And we're not talking about uh, people whose eyes go in different directions. We're talking about Welcome to the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism, Kansas Walleye Initiative. One component of the department's Kansas Walleye Initiative is the Intermediate Walleye Production Program. Utilizing intensive walleye culture techniques, the department's fish culture section produces walleye exceeding eight inches through a three-phase program. Phase one is larviculture, phase two, feed habituation, and phase three is grow out. Walleye enter the program as tiny fry, just days old, and exit as eight inch or larger fish, roughly 180 days later. Walleye are a very popular sport fish in Kansas. Geographically, Kansas is located on the southern edge of the walleye range. Due to longer growing seasons and our fertile waters, Kansas walleye grow very quickly. However, Kansas walleye are rather short-lived when compared to their northern counterparts. 
While growth rates are good, natural walleye production in Kansas waters is often poor, resulting in populations dependent upon stocking. The larger the fish are at the time of stocking, the better the survival rate. Stocking larger fish is much easier said than done. Larger fish come with a larger price. Producing walleye larger than fry and fingerlings is more labor intensive, requires more equipment and space at the hatcheries, takes several additional months, and is obviously more expensive. Efforts are being made to overcome some of these limitations to increase production of this program. Through the Kansas Walleye Initiative, the Fisheries Management Section and the Fish Culture Section are working to provide Kansas anglers more and bigger walleye. We'll see you on the water. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. This segment brought to you by Bob Schwartz Financial. Values, commitment, transparency. Welcome to Around Kansas. I'm Jamie Bloom. Did you know there was once a thriving town in Kansas called Chico City? Pastor Steve Carrier tells us the story of how Chico City, once located in Dickinson County, battled to stay alive back in 1886, but ultimately disappeared from the map. These two towns started developing at the same time in 1886. And all these farmers started bringing their products to different towns. And between 1886 and 1890, uh, this town company had uh, actually plotted the, the whole town. They had sold a hundred plots of land to, to, for homes. They had developed, they had built a depot. They had a post office, a livery stable, a hotel, a restaurant, a grain elevator. They had a newspaper. They were pretty established then, really. It was absolutely established. They, they were a full-blown little town. And, the thing, the thing I, that I feel like what happened was Gypsum was so religious oriented mm -hmm. and Chico was so profit oriented secular that, and there was a rivalry already as far as who was going to get a depot 
that there was, a, there was an, an animosity developed pretty quickly between 1886 and 1890 between these two towns. The farmers found that Gypsum would not take their grain to uh, Chico, and Gypsum didn't have a depot. And so instead of, they were, they were warring for that depot, Chico had it, they would take their grains to Bavaria, which was quite a ways to the west, in, in opposition to taking it to the railroad that was in Chico. And they kept appealing to the railroad company, we want to have our own depot. We, we have more farmers in our area, and they began to sue. There was, there was a whole series of lawsuits that took place between uh, the railroad company and uh, Gypsum, and then later on with Chico and the railroad department uh, station. There was a legal battle going on. There was a pu heated public debate going on in the paper. It was a very interesting period of time that was happening there. So, again, again, the, the hub was which which of these towns was going to have a depot. It, you know, if the train didn't stop, you, you couldn't. You, the whole the whole connection to your economy was that depot. Yeah. And the town that had been given the right to the depot was Chico. Uh -huh. And so. Chico had a depot. They had a stop on the chain on the train between uh, that, uh, let's say, from Harrington on over to uh, Salina. Mm -hmm. And Chico was the designated stop. It had contractually agreed with uh, the, the the railroad company between it and the, the Chico Town Company to have the the, the train depot there. Mm -hmm. But with the growth of gypsum, the size of it growing, the farmers to the south doing their business in gypsum. And there was such a drag, or a draw, I should say, to that area from the railroad company that finally they had to buckle and to, and to, and to put up a depot in Gypsum. Mm -hmm. Well, when, that, when they put the depot in Gypsum, that rivaled Chico. And all of a sudden, there was, there was starting to be a drift more towards Gypsum mm -hmm. than Chico. Then it, it became even more legal because now Chico's survival uh, in the thrall, and if, if they lose their depot, they lose their, their whole source of their income, and they're gone. And they know that, and then they begin, it becomes even more passionate in their discussion with the newspaper, their legal battle intensifies against Gypsum, and finally, uh, Kip gets involved, and, and Kip says they want to have the depot. And uh, so, it, literally what happens is, the, the railroad company decide they're going to put the depot in Kip and take it out of Chico. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the night, they go in and take apart the depot and move it to Kip. And there's actually people arrested in the process oh because gosh. of the, 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 the what, what's happening. So the depot was moved from Chico to Kip, and now you had a depot in Gibson, and you had one in Kip, and you had this city. With all these flat, I mean, platted streets, you had all these businesses, and all of a sudden, people began to dismantle everything they had and move to one or the other city, Kip or to Gypsum, and most of them moved to Gypsum. Uh, and, and literally, you can go on to Menor Road where the track used to be. The track is no longer there, uh -huh. so it's just a railroad bed, and you can go out there, and you can't find a thing that represents. I mean, it's an alfalfa field and a milo field right now. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial, values, commitment, and transparency. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business that started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. 
based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Let us help feed your family. story about the trail drives of old that had to do with the way the chuck wagon cook would place the chuck wagon every night on the trail drive. And it got me thinking about some inspirational thoughts and the guidance we need from above. So this is a serious poem titled, A Guide from Above. In the history of the West, in the days of old, from the era of cattle drives, a story is told. A chuck wagon accompanied the herd each day so the cowboys could have food along their way. But wherever it was they made camp for the night, the old cook was careful to do one thing just right. He'd look at the night sky from afar and place the wagon with the tongue pointing toward the North Star. Then every morning when daylight came, their northerly direction would be the same. And when they drove those cattle forth, they knew their direction would be true north. In modern life, our directions are sometimes unclear with demands and distractions from life and career. We have no chuck wagons or cattle drives, but there's lots of confusion in the things that we strive. So like the cowboys of old, let's do this just right and follow a heavenly guide every morning and night. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. My daughter Noelle and I were traveling back from Garden City where we had checked on her things the other day and her apartment. She's been staying with us during the um, uh, confinement. And we were traveling back into a storm front. And the season is upon us, folks. She got some spectacular photographs. Now we count among our friends some really incredible storm chasers. Uh, my friend Michelle Martin being one, uh, Jesse Post, uh, so many folks. So let's take a look at storm chasing and some incredible storm images. And let's face it, Kansas has a front row seat for some mighty impressive shows. Kansas storms. They send us to the basement for cover or to the front porch for a better view. They bring blessed rain and blasted destruction. When it comes down to it, Mother Nature is the ultimate drama queen. She has created some spectacular shows in our Kansas skies, exhibitions that bring folks from far and wide to watch, like our friend Michelle Martin. When I lived in Kansas, I discovered, quite accidentally, that one of my favorite places to be was out in the wide open, watching a thunderstorm move in. I discovered it accidentally because my very first night living in Kansas, unloading a moving truck, there was a tornado warning. And a few days after that, we had a series of severe storms that rolled through. And I left Pittsburgh 
and headed west so I could get a better look at them. And from that moment on, I was mesmerized. There's nothing to me that is more beautiful, more ominous, but more breathtaking than seeing a super cell thunderstorm, seeing the updraft, seeing the base of the storm as it lowers and rotates, watching it trying to produce a funnel cloud, feeling the wind that comes with it, feeling the rain, running from the hail, but also seeing the backside of a storm lit as the sun is starting to set and seeing all of the incredible colors that are reflected in those clouds is nothing short of breathtaking. Seeing mammatus clouds hanging down from a thunderstorm and watching them turn different colors, glowing orange, pink, and purple, it makes you realize how tiny and insignificant we are as human beings and how great and powerful nature can be. So I think there's nothing more beautiful this time of year than a dark storm moving in and bringing rain, which is very life-giving and hopefully not doing a whole lot of damage. But there's nothing more beautiful than that beautiful architecture, that structure of a thunderstorm. It's something that is powerful, it's majestic, it's artistic, and it's also in a very strange way nourishing because you are there watching and having a conversation with nature. Just think about it, folks. The real star of The Wizard of Oz wasn't the wizard or even Dorothy. It was a Kansas storm, Mother Nature, rearranging the world to suit her whim. Thank you for joining me this Wednesday. God bless everybody. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you somewhere around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business that started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.